viewers welcome to our channel we are here to learn about figures of speech its definition types and explanation with examples a figure of speech is a deviation from the plain and ordinary use of words with a view to increasing or specializing the effect as a literary device a figure of speech enhances the meaning of written and spoken words in oral communication a figure of speech clarify enhance description and create interesting use of language types of figure of speech one figures of orthography two figures of etymology three figures of syntax four figures of rhetoric one a figure of orthography is an intentional misspelling of the words. It includes 1. Archaism and 2. Mimesis. Archaism is the spelling of the words after the old form or the use of an obsolete form despite modern words as Kinj for king Coffee for coffee Spake for spoke Stroke for struck E. Mimesis is the mimicking of an incorrect pronunciation by false spellings. Mimesis can be vocal or behavioral. In Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol, the character Ebenezer Scrooge is the perfect behavioral representation of mimesis. The mimetic qualities Dickens employed were so realistic. A figure of etymology is changes in the ordinary form of words, by addition, omission and by separation of parts. It includes 1. Aparesis 2. Ellipsis 3. Pleonasm 4. Solepsis 5. Enelage 6. Hyperbaton I. Aparesis is the omission of one or more letters of the beginning of the word. As Against for against. Here beginning word, A, is omitted. Gone for began, here two words are removed. Tis for it is. 2. Ellipsis is the omission of words essential to the structure of a sentence. It is more common in speech than in writing. 1. I'll go, hence to London. In this sentence, main verb is omitted. 2. My father is wiser than I am. 3. This being done, they released. 4. I consider him to be an honest man. 3. A pleonasm is when one uses too many words to express a message. A pleonasm can be either a mistake or a tool for emphasis. Pleonasm is derived from a Greek word pleonasm is meaning excessive. Examples 1. I heard it with my own ears. When one hears something we can presume it with one's own ears. The addition of with one's own ears is pleonasm. 2. He sees that you have arrived. Hear the use of conjunction. That is optional. 3. I do care about you. Here do is not needed, but it can be used to emphasize that one does truly care. 4. They offered free gifts to us. Gifts are by definition free. So use of free is pleonasm. 4. Syllapsis is a figure of speech in which a single word is used to modify two or more words in a sentence but the meaning of that word is different in relation to each of the other words. Example of Solepsis Fix the problem, not the blame. Dave Weinbaum Here, the verb, fix, governs both, problem, and, blame. In its first instance, fix, literally means, solve, but this verb shifts its meaning when applied to its second object, where the figurative conception of it, fix, is taken to mean, assign. Solepsis can also be used to create a sense of humor or an irony. 
For examples in a sentence, he lost his job and mind. The word lost is used as a past tense verb in relation to the job but as an adjective in relation to the mind. 5. Enelage is the use of one part of speech for another, or of one form for another. The use of plural you for the singular thou, or use of we for I are common examples of enelage. In poetry, the adjectives and the adervibes are often interchanged. 6. Hyperbaton is the change in the usual order of words. Examples. 1. Do they call virtue their forgetfulness? 4. Do they there call virtue forgetfulness virtue? 2. Wander the wide world over. 4. Wander over the wide world. 3. Figures of rhetoric is also known as tropes, or deviations from ordinary meaning of words. Types. 1. A simile. 2. A metaphor. 3. Allegory. 4. Metonymy. 5. Synecdoche. 6. Hyperbole. 7. Apostrophe. 8. Personification. 9. Irony. 1. A simile is a direct comparison of two objects, by the way of explanation or of embellishment. It is generally introduced by like, as, or so with correlative in the second member of the comparison. 1. She is as pretty as a picture. 2. I am pleased as punch. 3. He is strong like an ox. 4. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. 2. A metaphor is a comparison implied but not expressed. In metaphor, the words like, as or so are not used. Examples 1. She is a star in the sky. 2. His name is a tower of strength. 3. He is a fish out of water. 4. A monster sleeping in its own thick breath. 3. An allegory is a story designed to illustrate some moral truth containing a continued metaphor. Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress is the best example of an allegory carried through an entire work. 4. Metonymy Metonymy is the substitution of one name for another related name, as the name of an author for his work, an effect of a cause, the container for the thing contained, the sign for the thing signified, a place for its inhabitants, the material for the things made of it. Examples 1. We are reading Shakespeare. 2. Gray hairs deserve respect. 3. He drank the cup to its dregs. 4. He carried away the palm. 5. Hear me, time. 6. He drew his steel. Synecdoche, a figure of speech, is the putting of a part for a hole, or a hole for a part. As. A sail for a ship. A roof for a house. A winter for a year. Bread for food, hired hands, refer to workers. The word, head, refers to counting cattle or people. The word, wheels, refers to a vehicle. The word, boots, refers to soldiers, etc. 6. Hyperbole is an extravagant metaphor or a comparison beyond all reasonable limits. Cold as Greenland, used for a sever winter day. Light as day, used used for a clear moonlight night. Waves mountain high, are examples of hyperbole. 7. Apostrophe Is a turning aside from the order of narration to address some real or imaginary character, as in the fall of Warsa, the author turns away from his narrative with this apostrophe, O righteous heaven! Ere freedom found a grave, where slept the sword, omnipotent to save. 8. Personification Is the representing an inanimate object, or a brute, as endowed with human attributes. 1. I heard the wind whistling. 
2. The water danced across my window. 3. The moon is smiling at me. 9. Alliteration. When two or more words begin with the same vowel, or the same consonant or the same syllable, this is called alliteration. British Romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, in his poem The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, uses this literary device to enhance the musical rhythm of the poem. The fair breeze blew, the white foam flew, and the furrow followed free. We were the first to ever burst into the silent sea. In the above example, the word pairs, breeze, blue, foam, flew, furrow, followed, free, and silent, see are examples of alliteration. 9. An irony is a situation in which there is a contrast between expectation and reality. That is, the difference between what something appears to mean versus its literal meaning. Irony is associated with both tragedy and humor. Examples of irony. 1. A fire station that burns down. 2. Winner of a spelling bee failing a spelling test. 3. Marriage counselor divorcing the third wife. 4. Sending a Christmas card to someone who is Jewish. Thanks for watching.